Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to tell you another recipe for Power Automate, how to attach files from your SharePoint list into the approval. So I'm assuming you already know about Flow, Power Automate, you already know how to create approval workflow. But one of the common scenario that uh, we all have is, let's say you have some files, like you, you can see in the picture, you have some files attached to your SharePoint list items and you're creating an approval workflow, you're triggering an approval workflow on top of this list item and you want to attach these attachments also, these files also in that approval so that approver when he looks at it, he or she looks at it, uh, they know what you're talking about. Uh, I did an earlier video uh, to do the same thing but that was for sending email notification. We'll use a lot of the same concepts with a few tweaking as you will see in this video, uh, but these are very common scenarios. So let's get started. Uh, let me show you what you will have at the end of this video, uh, and then we'll go ahead and do it together. So here is the SharePoint list, my uh, SharePoint uh, list, which is a test one. I just added one item here, it's an issue list. You see this first issue, fake issue, and I just added two files here. And these are the files that we want to make sure when the approval flow is created. So let's look at our approval workflow. This is the ready-made one that I ran and succeeded. So walking through this will help you understand what will happen here. So this is the approval workflow. This is the last run. As you can see, when the item is created or modified, so that means when something, a new item is created in this issue tracker, or something is modified here. This flow gets triggered. It takes all the attachments. You will see two concepts here, getting attachment. Uh, getting the attachment is a two-step process. So first get the list of attachments, and then one by one, you will get the content of those attachments. So very similar concept if you've seen my previous video on emailing. Uh, so you'll get the attachment concept. You have a variable attachments in it's an array type of variable that will be empty uh, and one by one you will put the content of this in this array variable one change you will see here and this is the only change between this and the email one is here the format of this json uh, for this array is little bit different so instead of content bytes in the earlier video it's content only uh, and then you just create the approval uh, and send the attachments. That's that's all you got to do. Same uh, attach the same variable, and your approval is ready. If you want to see how the approver will see this approval, go to approvals in flow.microsoft.com. You'll see all the approvals that this person gets. Uh, that person clicks on the detail, and they can see all the attachments attached. So it's pretty simple, but very common scenario. So let's build this from scratch. By the way, uh, the concepts that you will learn by this, uh, by doing this is array variables. You might already know, but if you don't, this is a good way to know. Getting attachments and getting content. Like I said, attachment from SharePoint list is a two-step process. First, get the list of attachments and the content. The right JSON format, including attachments in the approval workflow and as always, how to do a quick testing for these kind of scenarios. All right, so I will keep this open so that I can keep copying a few things as I'm building. Uh, so let me go to my flows. Uh, this is the flow I'm talking about. Uh, okay, I put this in edit. I will also create a new one from here. All right, I'm in the right environment. I have multiple accounts, so I just want to make sure I'm doing it from the right account. Okay, uh, go to my flows. and I will create a new one. Okay, so new flow. And I will say 
automated cloud flow. The reason for that is we are not manually triggering this flow. We are triggering it when some event happens in the SharePoint list. So that means automated cloud flow. Okay, and I'll skip this part, although this is a very useful feature of flow or power automate, but I'm just gonna do it from scratch so that you can see all the concepts happening here. All right, so what triggers us? And we can keep referring back to a ready-made flow. Some of my connections are not valid, but don't worry, I can always sign in again. Uh, I've enabled two-factor authentication, so sometimes it becomes a problem here. Uh, so I'm signing in here. Um, okay. All right. So as you'll see, uh, we have to get this from SharePoint, and there are many triggers. Got it. When an item is created or modified okay that's a trigger and for which SharePoint list the SharePoint list that we are going to use is uh, this SharePoint list uh, this site address and this is the SharePoint list and that's it so whenever a new item is created or modified in the SharePoint list rest of the flow actions will continue so what's the next action we need to take so let's look back into our flow uh, okay, and it says that you should get the list of attachments. All right, so let's get the list of attachments. Like I said, attachments is a two step process. First, you have to get the list of attachments, and later on, we will use this get attachment content. And when you look uh, get the list of attachments you'll get the name of the attachment and some other information uh, but not really the content all right so site address the list name and what's the ID so what should be the ID of the item for which you want to get the list of attachments it's very simple the item which was created or modified so for this you use dynamic content which is the output of this previous step uh, should be the ID so that's it. So now you got the list of attachments. Let's see what happens next. Yeah, so next is initialize variable where you want to create an empty array variable so that you can hold the attachment contents and everything in this variable. And this is the variable you're going to use as attachments in the last step, which is creating the approval. So let's do that here, create the variable. For each variable that you have in Power Automate, you have to first initialize uh, before you can use it. And I'm gonna give the name attachments. You could have given any name. What's the type of this variable? Since this is going to be a list of all the attachments, I'm gonna put array and don't need to put any value because it's an empty one. So we are done with this step. What's the next step that we have to take? So next step, if you see here is, let's expand this you'll see that we have to append so we have to get the attachment content the thing that i've been talking about getting attachment content and append that to the variable so let's do that here let's go back to this action and say attachment content and i already got attachment content okay now what for what attachments so give the same information again site address the list the id so now there are two ids and they might look confusing to some of you the way to understand is first one is the id of the item that file is attached to so that means we are talking about this id id of the item and the second file identifier is the attachment for which you want to get the content. So that means the attachment list that you got from here. So let's do that here. Uh, and Flow will out, uh, intelligently only give you the right information here, the right options here. Uh, and you can see is this is only coming from item is modified or, or created. So I selected this, go to file identifier, 
and here I can see list of get attachments and this is coming from this previous step where you got the list of attachments so I selected this and you notice as soon as I did that flow or power automate uh, first of all I should apologize that I keep using these terms flow and power automate because I've been using it for a long time flow was the earlier name now it has been rebranded to power automate so I know I should be using power automate but sometimes I still say flow but they mean the same thing all right so uh, you you notice that as soon as I did that flow or power automate automatically realize that you have to get attachment content for each and every attachments that you found in this step so it intelligently figured out that we have to do some kind of apply to each think of apply to each as a for loop all right so now we have attachment content for each and every attachment list that we got from here so what that means is from this list you got this you got this but just their name and in the next step you got their content as well now we have to keep all those attachment and content in this array variable that we created because that's the one we're going to use so how do we do that let's go back to this variable and we have to append to this array variable that means you have to add those content to this variable all right and which variable you want to append to so attachments that we created earlier and value and this is the main crux of it what value you want to assign so let's go back to here it's very important to use the right names here because if you don't use the proper JSON structure that's where uh, if you use these attachments into this step and you will see just to step ahead you'll see there's this attachments variable we are using this step if we don't use the proper JSON structure here, that's where you're going to experience some problems. And I'm also going to put this in the description. So uh, you can either pause the video and make note of it, or you can just copy and paste from the description of the video. All right, so let's do that. So it's a JSON structure, two curly brackets. The first one is name. And for name, what do we want to put? This should be name of the attachment, so if you look, look at the output of previous step, which is getting the list of attachments, you see different fields that you're going to get from there. And I'm going to use display name. Because when you attach this in your approval, it's good to use the same name, although you could have used some other names also. But just for clarity for the approval, it's better to use the same name. All right, so we got that display name. Don't forget the comma and then content. So let's do that content and for content you just say attachment content this is the actual content you got and this is the binary information that you got from here all right so let's go back here and we're done with this step all right what's the next step next step is just creating the approval uh, although I'm creating all these steps together I normally recommend that when you're doing it yourself, stop, keep saving and keep testing yourself so that you know if you're getting things right up to this uh, uh, stage. All right, so let's create the approval workflow and I'll say create an approval. Uh, what's the approval type? it's i'm just saying first to respond you could have selected any of these options and now there are some title that you can pick whatever here i said approve uh, here i said approve this item it's a good idea to put some heading so that so i just type this text and it's good idea to also give some headline of this item so that each and every approval don't have the same title. So I'm just going to give the name of the or title of the item that we are asking for the approval. Now, who do we want to send this approval to? Uh, in this case, I'm just sending it to myself. This is the email address that I'm using. Uh, 
in in real life you will probably put somebody else as the approval because no point having the person who is creating also as the approval but in some cases it's legitimate also because somebody else might be adding item to your sharepoint list so it's good to have someone else now i think you're done with most of the important parts uh, which are required without the attachment but in this flow in this approval workflow you also want the attachment and when you look at this you will be confused uh, it says attachment one attachment two you have to keep on manually adding multiple attachments but how do you do that your list of attachments are in this variable uh, so the trick here is to look at this option here on the right side and when you switch it says switch to input entire array you switch it will just say give the array name and it will just assume that it's multiple attachments and it will read the array information one by one and that will be the list of attachments so let me do that so i will say attachments uh, i should just select it from here in fact i should not type i should just select so let me delete it and just select this and that's all you have to do just save and your flow is ready to go uh, we just have to test it for testing okay let's see what are the options you can do it manually you can do it automatically uh, since we have never run it before i don't think manual option will be there let's see uh, actually manual option is there i get confused between manual and automatic it's a new term they started using but uh, I said manually, but it has to be triggered somewhere. So let's say here, the way to trigger that is I'll just go to this existing item that I have and I'll make some modification so that this flow gets triggered. Okay, so let me do that. So here's a dummy description. I'll just remove this and tab out. It triggers the saving part. So it's saving that item. So that means this item is modified and now this flow is uh, hopefully getting triggered and if everything goes well we will see a new approval here so it says flow is running we will also examine what what is happening there so okay it's all done and it ran successfully but let's see what happened here so of course it got triggered when the item was created or modified which we just modified let's look at list of attachments and here we have list of attachments as part of display so we got that here we have initialize so we got empty and here we are getting the content of that and at the end of it getting the variable so in every variable now we have this information and we created the approval with the attachments and if as an approver if I go to my action items and approvals, I will see a new approval here, which just got created 30 seconds ago. And when I click on this, I can see these attachments also here. So it's as simple as that. Just the key part is to make sure that you have the right JSON structure. So let's just summarize with some quick takeaways. One takeaway, getting attachment content is a two-step process very very important we saw that secondly your variables have to be initialized before you append value or do something with that and very very important to have the right json structure which i'll also put in the description of the video hope you like this uh, you found this video useful let me know if you need any video like this if you need any help here are the ways you can reach out to us and stay in touch thank you have a great day